you and I talked about Columbine. A girl, go, the, one of the boys, gets a MAC-10 pistol the day before, just pays cash for it and all the, all the bullets for it, and these two boys go to a gun show. They're not old enough. They're dressed in their trench coats, and they take a little groupie friend of theirs, a girl, who says, let's buy this, let's buy this, let's buy the ammo. No one ever asks them. They go, are you 18? It's against the law in Colorado to own a gun if you're under 18, to buy a gun. And she goes, I'm the one. Here's my driver's license. No background checks. Nobody asks them what are you going to do for that. And next day they shoot not 39 people. John Walsh began his adult life as just a father. But when his young son was kidnapped, tortured, and brutally murdered by a drifter, he devoted his life to the hunting and capturing of criminals. Now he has taken on the National Rifle Association as host of a new cable series called The Hunt and has made gun control a frontline issue in the show. That means taking on the National Rifle Association and their power to make or break gun laws in this country. Does this touch on anything new and will it make any real difference? Welcome into Midpoint. From the pro-gun side, he is the chief instructor of the South Florida Gun School and a member of the NRA, Bob Harvey. And we welcome back one of the very few people on the anti-gun side willing to be part of such debates, the executive director of Women Against Gun Violence, Margo Bennett, joins us. Margo, thank you once again for being with us. Bob, thank you so much for being here. It's nice to have me. Bob, I'm going to start with you, seeing as you're here in the studio. Bob, uh, John Walsh's big point is that America lawmakers are afraid of the NRA, and the NRA simply has them in their pocket and won't let them loose. How would you answer that? I think that's a bit strong. First, I'd like to say that I have a lot of respect for John Walsh. Uh, what happened in his life is a tragedy uh, that no father, as a father, I can, my heart goes out to him and to his family. But most people don't realize that John's son was not even killed with a gun. He was killed by a mentally ill criminal. Um, the work that John's done is incredible. Over a 25-year career, they've captured 1,202 criminals. Uh, they have found 60 children that were kidnapped. His work's incredible, but he's on the wrong side of this issue. Why? Well, first off, John will tell you he's a gun owner himself. Yes. And that amazes me because one of the things that he hits on is the fact that he's a gun owner, um, he respects guns, but 90% of the American population wants stronger background checks. Um, he really doesn't understand the Constitution if that's the case because we're not a democracy. If that were the case, the people that would want to step up on for gun control, um, if 90% of the people in the United States wanted to vote them not to do that, they'd lose their First Amendment right. Wait, but you're saying America is not a democracy? Um, it is a constitutional republic. There is a difference. Okay. And the difference in your mind is? Individual rights count. Okay. Margo, I'm going to turn to you right now because part of this comes down to what John Walsh says is a reticence by Congress and by people in power to take on the NRA simply because they fear the NRA. In your opinion, is he correct? And why then do they fear this organization so much and are not willing to take action? I think he's correct. Um, but I also want to correct the, the fact that we are not an anti-gun organization. And but we are a gun safety organization. The radicalized NRA members, and I mentioned radicalized because there are a majority of NRA members that are not radicalized, that are reasonable, that do want background checks, that do want gun safety legislation. But it's the radicalized NRA members and leadership that are holding Congress hostage. Um, I think, though, that there will be a shift uh, coming soon. I think that the public is starting to apply the pressure needed. All right, now the homicide rate, handgun involved incidents, increased very sharply in the late 1980s, early 1990s, before falling to a low in 2008. Is that not fair to say then, Margo, that something is being done? There are those saying that nothing is being done. It is a running rampant through gun control. But there is at least some action being taken that is positive, correct? Oh, absolutely. And here in California, uh, we have great gun safety legislation. The problem is that we need national 
gun safety legislation because of course you know most of the states are not surrounded by moats and uh, the poor legislation in some states affects you know the other states that are trying very hard to protect their populations Margo I have a question for you women against women gun violence you claim that you are in you are for gun safety absolutely how many classes has your organization taught in firearm safety in the last year well I think we probably think about gun safety in a different way uh, you're referring to it by saying that teaching people how to use guns and please correct me if I'm wrong but I, I'm thinking that what you're suggesting is that teaching people how to use guns is a gun safety issue. Is that what you're uh, saying? Well, no, no, wait. But what I'd like to tell you what we consider, and I'll, and we've already reached out to almost uh, just in the last mm, six months, have reached the families of 12,000, over 12,000 elementary school um, children here mm -hmm. in Los Angeles County through our talk program. I mean, so what we're encouraging as gun safety is discussion about guns. Be sure you talk with your children about guns. Talk okay, so wait a minute. Hang on one sec, Margaret. Wouldn't you agree with that, Bob? Doesn't th That makes common sense. You know, I always laugh when people start talking to me about gu common sense gun control. There's a, there's a lot of different issues. And, and, and Margo, trust me, you know, I, I applaud you for reaching out to those 12,000. But those right-wing NRA, I actually forgot the term that you used. I used radicalized. Radicalized instructors for the NRA and the National Rifle Association reached out to firearm safety to over 400,000 people in basic firearm safety classes. You got a long way to go to take and touch that. Let me cover another thing for you. You're Briefly, in, please. Briefly, please. You're, you're, you're in to schools talking to them about new gun laws. We have enough gun laws. Gun laws are not the issue. Until we fix the mental issue, the mental health care issue in this country, we're going to have violent crimes, and guns on their own are not violent. Okay, I'm going to stop you there for a sec, Margo. i got a couple of minutes left here. There are enough gun laws in the country. Agree or disagree? Um, I disagree because some jurisdictions do not have any gun laws or enough gun laws, um, and maybe some jurisdictions may have too many. But overall, we don't have effective laws. What would you like to see as an effective law then? Again, briefly, please. I'd like to see universal background checks, and I would like to see more legislation on prohibiting high-capacity magazines. Okay, two things there. First of all, what's wrong with universal background checks? We already have background checks. Universal background guy. checks, though. Universal background checks gives a foreign country the ability to step on our Constitution. That's never going to fly in this country. We can go on and on and on on that. What about the magazine issue? Magazine issues are, mean nothing. Um, uh, someone that knows how to shoot can swap a magazine as fast as they can fire a 30 round magazine. And when so they passed the high cap magazine ban the last time, it did zero for violent crime. Answer out, Margo, you had a, you had a response? Yeah, I, first of all, that's not true. Um, it did make a difference. It meant nothing. Uh, but, but if it's true that you can swap out a lower capacity magazine as quickly as firing maybe the 15 bullets in a high capacity magazine, then do us a favor and throw us that bone and limit it to 10. What would be I wrong mean, with that, Bob? The problem, the you problem, have the capacity to do it. The problem with that is I just now gave you an example of, of another law that does absolutely nothing. Absolutely uh -huh. nothing. It did nothing in the past. It'll do nothing this time. Until we start spending the money on mental health care, you're not gonna fix the problem. You have the strongest gun laws in the country in Chicago and over the 4th of July weekend, you had 14 shot and killed 
an in excess of 82 shot total. Okay, I'm going to have to stop you there one sec. Margo, I have just a few seconds left, 10 seconds left, and your final answer here or your final comment? My final comment is that really I encourage all of the reasonable Americans to come together and really come up with both legislative and community solutions. Okay, 10 okay. seconds. Uh, we have a great firearms law here passed on Florida Statute 790 that our, our gun ownership has increased and violent crimes have decreased since 1987 when that law was passed. We'll have to hold it there. Bob Harvey, Margo Bennett, thank you so much for joining us. A wonderful debate which we're going to continue and we'll return right here on Midpoint on the Newsmax TV Network.